the third gen, going to be doing a little bit of like a ride along video with you guys. So we haven't done like a ride along style video in a little while and that's what we're going to be doing right now. So we're in the third gen and I introduced you guys to this truck the last couple of last handful of days, which by the way, you can actually enter to win this truck and the first gen that is up for grabs right now. 50 times entries are live for the first time ever and you're getting 50 times entries in for this truck and into the first gen right now. I'll pop a picture of that first gen up right here. Beautiful gunmetal green metallic truck. Uh, five speed, four wheel drive, 12 valve Cummins. Awesome truck, you will love it. And if you wanna get entered for that one and this third gen right now, which is a one owner truck from Utah, now is your chance. Get in for both at the same time, link in bio. Although this is not any type of substantial load, we're talking about an ATV on a 14 foot trailer, landscape trailer, so everything here is pretty lightweight. I did want to do a ride along in this so you guys can see just how smooth this thing drives and shifts. Um, get a look at the dash, 133,000 miles on it, low mileage truck, one owner. Um, but the thing runs and drives so, so nice. And we're not driving the truck much, but I do need to go do something today. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to do that ride along video um, because I am going to be pulling just a small trailer with it. I mean, you're talking like a total of 3,000 combined pounds back there, not much. but. Um, we are going to be doing just a small trailer and um, I thought it'd be a good time I'm already gonna be doing just a little bit of driving to do a drive along. So here we are our fourth gen brother there Let's get on the road here Get a little straight away This thing does have uh, an Apple CarPlay head unit in there. It's a Pioneer. It's pretty nice And I like how they've got it wired up so you can actually use your USB port or you can actually use an auxiliary as well. Very clean installation there to be quite honest, but here we go. We are in tow haul by the way, although it's probably not necessary to be in tow haul pulling, uh, pulling this little trailer. I do have it in tow haul. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, shifts good, drives good, sounds really good. AC keeps this interior nice and chilly. We just gotta run by the bank, grab a little something because we gotta go pick up the wife's birthday gift here. Actually, the day you see this, I think it will be her birthday or the day before. So if you wanna drop her a happy birthday in the comments, um, I'm actually gonna be picking up a deer mount for her her deer mount from last year her first archery buck uh, she's been really getting into the bow hunting thing the last few years and two years ago she got a doe behind the house with her bow uh, at 13 yards and then um, last season she shot a three and a half year old buck behind the house at 15 yards and so she's been getting into it and she's been doing doing great super proud and we're gonna go grab that so we can go pick that up for her on her birthday she's gonna be with me she already knows if she sees the video before we get the mount she already knows we're going to grab it but um excited to see it because she hasn't had a new deer mount in several years so i'm pretty happy to see how this thing turns out for her so we've been in here about 25 minutes and i actually reset the mpg when i got in the truck it was reading like 16 17 but it also um i also had it idling like for 20 minutes before i hopped in so i wanted to reset it um and it's saying we're in that 20 ish range it's kind of bounced back and forth over the last 20 minutes between like 19 and 22 but it's kind of favoring around that 20 range and i don't know how accurate that is anyway so take it as a grain of salt i mean that thing could be completely inaccurate because this truck does have bigger than factory tires on it stuff like that and i don't know exactly how that's calculating i don't know if it's based on tire rotation and rpm and kind of like somehow the computer does the math to factor how much fuel it should have burned assuming it's a stock a totally stock truck but yeah so thank you for what it is but it is doing really good um like i said tiny trailer the trailer's not really the point of it um it's not like it's a towing test Otherwise we would have more than 3,000 pounds behind this thing. But I did just wanna let you guys see the truck go through some gears and drive down the road and see how it drove. You can see the steering here. I'll zoom it out for half zoom. And there is the Apple CarPlay. It works great, super nice. I mean, again, it's one of those things, like it's got 
the key fob for locking and unlocking and remote starting the truck. It's got a lot of the creature comforts that you want out of a newer truck, but you've got that 5.9 under the hood, dude. You just got to think about that. It is worth something having a truck that you don't have to worry about DEF, DPF, you know, speed limit being reduced to five miles per hour if you run low on def, stuff like that. I mean, those are inconveniences that you don't really recognize until you are in the situation. I was actually in that situation recently because I have a new truck and it's got def. It, it needs def to run. And um, there's a good looking power stroke. Holy smokes, good looking truck. Um, but it, my truck needs def, my, my new truck. I have an old truck too, a second gen gas, love that truck. But my new truck takes def, and I was in the middle of nowhere towing a truck, and I had forgot to top off my def tank, and it re it didn't reduce my speed, but I got down to like 15 miles left until it was going to reduce my speed to five miles per hour. Like, how inconvenient is that? Especially when you're towing, there's limited gas stations and stuff to get into, depending on where you're at. Um, but just just crazy. But it happens. So something to think about when you do not need to worry about those things it does have a value on it that's for sure i still love living in ohio if you're wondering gorgeous views beautiful terrain big box you know the important things still love it not sick of it yet and uh, i don't think that'll ever happen so just a little just a little where i live update you can see steering is super tight it's got just a tiny, tiny bit of play, but the, the play that it has is mostly just because of the 35s on it. But this thing on stock wheels and tires, straight as an arrow with like almost zero play in the wheel. The play in the wheel thing, it just kind of, it just kind of happens when you go aftermarket on wheels and tires and they get bigger and there's just a little bit more tire on the road, a little bit more to pull the wheel, a little bit one way or the other. Now these aren't anything crazy. It's only a 35 by 1250 on like a 17.9. So nothing crazy, but everything you go bigger than factory, it does have a super, super minor effect. And like I said, I mean, for the most part, it's not like you have to constantly monitor the wheel to keep it on the road. I mean, it, for the most part, just drive straight. But for Dodge, I'm telling you, no hands, no knees. The thing drives really nice. Some pretty good, great terrain change here up and down these hills. I don't know if the camera's doing it much justice, but very, very hilly. Been down this road a couple hundred times throughout my childhood. It goes up and down, up and down. All the way down, all the way up. And the truck's doing phenomenal, like doing really, really good. And now guys, like I said, I know it's a small trailer. It's not like, it's not like the trailer's hurting the truck, but do you know how like stock first, uh, second and third gen transmissions, sometimes even fourth gens. And um, sometimes they're like, they're either gear hunting too much or what they're doing is not downshifting when you need to downshift. And so it's just bogging the truck down like crazy cause it's, it's like fighting wanting to downshift and you're going up and down hills. This thing like without any hesitation, as soon as you go down and you start to go back up a hill, and it feels any kind of resistance, like it's gonna become sluggish, it downshifts to make sure that that does not happen. And then it just accelerates right on up the hill. And then once you're at the top of the hill and you no longer need any kind of higher RPM and downshifting, it just pops back down into a higher gear, lets the RPMs drop and you're good. Like this is nice and easy right now, but back there where there were some a little bit steeper hills, a little bit steeper terrain, I personally like that. Instead of a transmission being, oh, I really want that first gen so bad. That first gen has been sitting in the weeds there since I was like, I don't even know. It's probably like five or six years old, somewhere in there. Um, that truck's been parked there. And I don't know why it ever got parked, but it's a first gen dually. It's a four wheel drive truck too. Uh, the guy parked it for some reason, then he bought a brand new one in 05. It's an o he actually has an 05 dually as well. So for some reason he parked that 12 valve first gen there and just left it for the weeds. And it's been sitting there for the last 22 years, I think. 20, 22 years, give or take. So I don't know if something catastrophic happened. I would hope for him to park it like that, or he 
you just had a transmission problem and back in the day those trucks weren't weren't really worth trading in back in 05 and so maybe he just thought forget it i'd rather just park it in the yard and go buy a new truck it's not even worth trading but i've always wanted to buy that truck and see if we can get it to fire up and then redo it just because i've literally driven past that thing a couple hundred times over my childhood and over my lifetime and it's never moved ever uh, but anyway so on the topic of the transmission so this thing it, it does great it's in tow haul but it seamlessly shifts on level ground but when you are going up and down oh, look at that groundhog i hate groundhogs when you are going up and down more steep terrain if you know what a stock second gen or third gen transmission shifts like what they do is they stay in like overdrive or they stay in a higher gear that they should not be and you have to like punch it into the fuel for it to like realize, oh shoot, he wants to downshift. Just saying like you have to do that for it to like realize, oh shoot, time to downshift. Versus this, this thing effortlessly, when it starts to feel any resistance, like it needs more power, it just downshifts like it's supposed to. I mean, that's what they're supposed to do anyways. It downshifts to make sure it maintains that RPM where it needs to be to keep the truck moving forward and maintain speed and everything else and super happy with the way this thing drives. And this was a real test because when I test drove it, I was in Indiana, totally flat ground, no terrain, nothing. Um, this definitely tested it in terms of getting an actual feel for how the transmission behaves. Couldn't be happier. That's honestly it for this video, guys. It wasn't really gonna be anything too too crazy. I did wanna show you right along, get a feel and a visual for how the transmission shifts. We got it all up to highway speeds, back roads, steep elevation changes through the hills it shifts and runs and drives the truck i'm impressed with it super impressed that's why we bought it of course to give away to one of you guys if you want to get entered for this truck we're the first one that's up for grabs right now I'll show that truck again right here you can do that right now 50 times entries are live for both trucks from july 26th which has already passed us to august 4th which is just a few days if you want to grab dual entries and get 50 times entries for both you can do that right now